The Mary catchment is one of the five highest contributors of fine sediment of the 35 catchment that flow into the Great Barrier Reef. There's around about 70% of fine sediment generated from stream bank in the Mary catchment. And this is due to historical land clearing and extensive sand and gravel extraction throughout the river system, as well as clearing of riparian vegetation and grazing pressure. The main impacts of sediment on the Great Barrier Reef is that it smothers coral and, and sea grasses, which are really important for um, feeding grounds for dugongs. It also reduces sunlight, uh, which is important for photosynthesis for corals and sea grasses, and it impacts on coral recruitment and their reproductive cycle. So there's been substantial sand and gravel extraction from the channel and that's led to widespread uh, widening of the channel, deepening. In some cases the channel's widened by greater than 60 metres. That's led to the loss of the habitat for those species such as the cod and the turtle. And over the last 50 years we've worked out there's probably been over millions of tonnes of sediment that's been washed out to the Great Barrier Reef, to the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef near Fraser Island. Council was interested in working at this site mainly because it, their water intake to Kenilworth was threatened by massive erosion on the bank here and it had been happening for a number of years and also um, because this is a council park, uh, the park itself was threatened with erosion from you know, the, the bank was receding back into the park. So between 2011 and 2015 a number of large floods passed through the Mary River uh, and here at Kenilworth uh, we had some pretty serious erosion occur on the river banks of the Mary River. This is a real problem for SEQ water because we rely on a process called bank filtration where water passes through the riverbank and into our well before it's uh, taken up to the water treatment plant. Five years down the track, this site has had phenomenal uh, success. Um, there's been an enormous amount of uh, revegetation re growth at the site and the pole fields have done a fantastic job in actually halting the erosion and starting the deposition of, of sediment. And that's been quite pivotal then for us to then go and actually fund successive sites throughout the region. The collaboration is really important because it brings together a breadth of knowledge and skills from the key players to be able to manage a very complex program of works. Uh, that's the Mary River Recovery Consortium that includes Burnett Mary Regional Group, Mary River Catchment Coordinating Committee and Alluvium Consulting. We um, have been working on the Mary River river banks in particular for 25 years and to be part of this large-scale project is, is a real feather in our cap to be able to fix some of these major, pro, major riverbank uh, eroding sites. So we installed these timber piles which sort of act like an artificial forest. They're vertical piles that sit within the riverbank and as water flows through them it slows down the water and can drop out sands and silts and that helps maintain the sandy bank habitat that's really important for the Mary River turtle and allows the vegetation to establish on the upper bank. The landholder is really necessary for the survival of that project. And it's absolutely essential because they need to keep their cattle off the site so the fence monitoring and repairing after floods is just so critical. The landholder are the eyes on the ground and, and the, the doers really. So it's really, really important to get landholders that are keen on the projects. They become sort of project champions and help sell the message within the broader community too. So one of the major benefits obviously is to protect uh, sustainable, well, prime agricultural land uh, from highly erosive activities like a big flood. Uh, but alongside that you get uh, the benefits of biodiversity. So you're really starting to um, improve the health of the river system as a whole. We're actually recreating the habitat for the Mary River cod, slowly. It'll take a longer time um, to recover than it did to degrade, um, but they are spawning now in the river where they may not have been 30 years ago. Here at the Carter's site, I remember personally standing here on my first site inspection and seeing large columns of dirt fall into the river. We were losing five and a half thousand cubic metres of soil every year from this particular site. And we've managed to get that down to about 550 cubic metres a year, which is a huge saving of roughly 90%. The vegetation is growing vigorously and is nice and healthy. We've also had a number of flows through here that have really tested the site and it's held its own. So it's been a great outcome so far. It makes me feel really good because um, it's amazing how fast the plants can grow and, and really change the visual and amenity aspect of, of a site. No man is an island. You fit into a community, you have to do your bit. The feeling of having something like this done, firstly, it looks fantastic, but that feel good to know that we are doing something on our farm 
that benefits not just all the communities down the river, not just all those communities in the reef, but actually for the whole world, it's a really good, it's a real buzz.